Welcome to another episode of The Bigger Picture and The Throne Room. Today I'm most excited, I'm most honored, and most pleased to be in the presence of a brother who have one of the strongest movements that we have come to see. It is so much information and knowledge that, you know, I would like to speak with this brother about. Um, I'm honored to be in his presence. To go no further, I would let him introduce himself, which many of us already know who he is. Shalom, brothers, sisters. I'm Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Pleasure to be here. I'm honored to be here, actually. And I'm honored that you're here. This means so much to me. When um, I got this phone call, it, it just like, it, it's things like this that let me know that God is has light on me and maybe see what I'm trying to do. Yes, sir. And see, you know, the mission I'm on. And I've always been watching you. And so it's just like, you know, this is just so honored. This is an honor to me. It means well, a lot to me, you know. So um, without further ado, we, you know, could go into it. It's um, some things that, you know, I just, you know, I, I'm a work in progress. Let me make that straight. I am no one of, you know, high knowledge or anything like that. I listen, I learn. I was raised, you know, in a private school, you know. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Christ Crusade Academy, Soul Saving Stations. Okay. But um, in Harlem, but that's how I was raised. I was raised there from a baby. I did my whole school there, you know. It, you know that's where, that's my background. That's where I come from, you know, but... I listen, you know what I'm saying? I'm not taking in the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to learn like anyone else. Yes, sir. So. Oh, praise. We all are. We all are. Exactly. So as long as that's understood, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but what I would like to ask you uh, to start out with is um, how do you come into your knowledge? Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a good story. Good story. Well, you know, my wife and I, we were on, um, well, we were dating at the time we were married. Uh, we were both searching for the truth, and because uh, we almost got hit by a cab. We was on Fifth Avenue walking, and a cab ran right up to us, about maybe five feet away, and crashed into the wall, smashed in the front. So I said, yo, we almost died. I said, God's trying to tell us something. I said, we got to get our minds right. So we started going to different churches, and I'm sitting there all the singing and dancing, jumping up and down. I'm like, mm, you get a good feeling, but I said, hey, there's nothing here. You know, so from there we went to the uh, Nation of Islam, um, read Message to the Black Man, visited the, like uh, one of the mosques, I think it was uh, the one in Jersey, once, twice. Then I said, hmm, I'm not feeling that second. There's something in there about um, Yaqub, uh, was it Yaqub, the big head scientist? Yeah, Yaqub. So I said, I don't understand that. I said, I can't, I can't mesh with that. So I left that alone. Then my, my godmother said, hey, uh, let's go to the um, comedic community. So we started following Dr. Ben, stuff like that. And I'm like, Egyptian, you know, Egyptology and all of that. I said, that was cool, but uh, cut that off for me. But that ain't it. So I'm at work one day. I was in a print shop and my high school buddy named Black, he came in. I ain't seen him in many years. So he said, hey, I need copies of this. You know, we, you know how you doing? Da, 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 da. So I said, I'll do, I'll do your work for it. Don't worry about it. So I'm Xeroxing it. So I looked, I'm reading the, one of the flyers as I'm copying it. And it said, Jesus is black. I said, yo, what, what is this Jesus black stuff? I said, Jesus is white man. He says, no. He said, you ever read the Bible? I said, mm, to be honest, no. I said, but all my life I grew up in the church. So he said, well, listen, there's a lot to learn. And on it said, Christmas is of the devil. I said, what? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I said, no, that's Jesus' birthday. He said, bruh. He said, I know. He said, I grew up the same way you did. I know. So after work, he came back and he showed me through the scriptures. And I was like, oh, shoot. I said, I never read this. Show me Jeremiah 10 about verse 1 through 5, how to, God says not to celebrate a holiday where you set a, a tree up in your house and decorate it with silver and gold. So I said, well, that sounds like Christmas. I said, okay. Then he showed me color in the scriptures, Jeremiah 14, 2, Jeremiah 8, 21. Revelation 1, 14, 15 about Christ, hair like wool, feet burned in a furnace. So I was like, wow. I said, I want to learn more. So he said, well, you got to go up to the school. This was 1990. So that's where it began. So my, my 
wife, who later became my wife, my girlfriend, who later became my wife, went with me up to the school, and it's been history from there. That we're the Israelites, the children of God, the God's chosen people in the Holy Bible, uh, who went into slavery for breaking God's commandments. And I've been there ever since, ever since. And would that have been um, the Israelite school of the universal practical knowledge? Yeah, the original, with the seven elders. That was uh, Masha, Yaquab, Shah, Kazak, um, Yeshaya, uh, uh, Arya, how could I forget him? Uh, there were seven of them, seven elders. Uh, and they, they uh, Masha died in 96. No, no, yeah, not around, not, no, 97. Something like that. Masha, uh, Yesha, I'm sorry, Yaquab died in 96. Masha died around 98, it was, somewhere around there. Uh, and that, and it, it, that was gone. So that what you got today is not the original. That's rehashed, refurbished. That's not the original that you see out there in the street today. That's not them. Um, can you tell me, because um, I was doing some studying, can you tell me um, about, uh, uh, I want to pronounce the name right, Tazadakia? Tazadakia, yes, sir. Yes, he was at the original school. He was a uh, junior to me. He was my junior. And he worked with myself, uh, another brother named Bishop Yawasab, in the video department. So he was about, we were what, about 22. He was about 17 at the time. Young man, you know, energetic. Um, and when the school split in 1995, um, Tazadakia, Jermaine Grant, he stayed with um, Arya, Yeshaya, Shar, and Kazak. My Shah took um, myself, Bishop Yawasap, and a whole bunch of other brothers and started um, HODC, that Schoolhouse of David Church. Okay. And I did want to say this. During, from 1990 to 95, um, the name was changed to ICUPK in around 92, because that's when they got a 501c3. So I just definitely wanted to put that out there. So that's all the seven elders. They had that. They've always had that from 92 on, 92, 93 on. So don't think it's like something unheard of. Because I hear people online, well, so you can't say certain things. You can say whatever you want with a 501c. What the hell are you talking about? People are simple. Our people are simple at times, but it's to be expected. So as I was looking up some things, how did you feel when he, um, or did he, you know, at some point claim that he was, you know, the Holy Spirit in the flesh. Yeah, I was shocked. And that came around, we'd, uh, we'd been separated a long time when I first heard that. When I first heard that was around the year, somewhere around 2000, 2002, somewhere around there. When I heard that, I was like, what? And he started saying that uh, Gabriel taught him the scriptures. I'm like, no. Because a lot of the people that they um, started um, ICGJC, Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ, 1941 Madison Avenue. Um, and most of those new people there, they didn't know him. So he was able to get away with saying the Holy Spirit came down and then the elders that were there backed it up, that the Holy Spirit came down and taught him. And we were like, no, he was our junior back at the old school. That's not, that's not true. So, but, um, that that's what happened. So I was I was very shocked when I heard that. How did the branch go off? The Rosicrucians. The Rosicrucians is a um, they're similar to the Jesuits, and they originally came. I believe it was in the eighties. Come remember, Mashan Yaquab used to tell us they gave them a, a blank check and said we wanted y'all to change the doctrine to a more Christian and Jewish doctrine. Get rid of the twelve tribes. Um, teach everybody's the people of God. Um, and Masha and Yaquab, they, the, they were the top guys. They, they refused. They came back around the beginning of 95 or end of 94, somewhere there. And little to, to, to my knowledge, I didn't know that any money was ex accepted. I knew there was a lot of stuff going on. And I remember one day, uh, Shaw, at the time we called him High Priest Shaw, he said to a brother named uh, Yaasha, because we had a, it was myself, Bishop Yaosap, uh, 
uh, Yaasha, I'm trying to remember the names, Mike Alaba, we had started Masha Ariel Productions where we had a bank account. Uh, and it was meant to support the leadership. And I remember Shaw said, um, we need that bank account. So Yaasha was a corrections officer. So he said, well, what you need, what, why? He said, we got to deposit some money. He said, where's the money coming from? And he said, Shaw said, don't worry about that. So Yasha said, well, listen, I work for the state. He said, I need to know any type of money that's coming in or out and with a bank account with my name on it, I need to know. So he said, well, we're not going to tell you. So he said, then you can't put it in this account. And it was a big thing about that. I remember that. So later on, I found out the Rosh Crucians had given, given money. My shot didn't want to accept that. So that's when he, the split happened. He broke off. And the rest of the elders, they accepted it. And it was like millions and millions of dollars. Because uh, if you remember, remember he got arrested, uh, Tazadaki got arrested for tax evasion on $5.3 million. Okay. So that's what occurred at that time. And, and believe it, the Rosh Cruises are still around seeing who can be bought. And that's some money. People, you, if you got a price, they'll buy you and get you to manipulate you to teach what they want you to teach. Um, G General Yohanna, I was, was General Yohanna came up with you or was you, was you, um, he was my senior. Oh, he, he, he was my senior, senior back that's then. What, that's what. Cause he came in around in the eighties. I came in 1990. Um, when the split occurred, he stayed back with Tazadakia. Uh, uh, Arya, Shah, Kazakh, Yishai, he stayed back there. My Shah took the rest of us and, like I said, set up HODC. Um, how did the how, how did you start your move? Well, IUIC was started in 2003. Because uh, during that time, after the split happened, we started to really study the scriptures more, trying to clean our lives up and learn God's commandments. Okay, like John, give me John 14, 15. I've been talking a bit. Mm -hmm. I need to uh, explain exactly what I'm Absolutely. saying. Read that. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So that was one of the things that always stuck with me. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Go ahead. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So we wanted the comforter. The comforter is not Jermaine Grant, Tazadakia. We knew it was the spirit of Christ. Like in verse uh, 18, jump down to 18. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Christ said, I will come to you. So we knew that the comforter is the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. We want that. So we knew the stipulation was keeping the commandments. So we had this, we really got into the scriptures, learning the commandments. And, um, there was a brother named uh, Amathia, I believe that was his name, if I'm not mistaken. They, a lot of the men with us didn't want to hear the commandments. So they kicked us out. So we didn't want to hear that. So we got kicked out. And we started, it was Asha, Rahab, um, another brother from Columbia, damn. I uh, forgot his name. Anyway, myself started 12 tribes. The school was called 12 tribes. And... One year went, this was around 99, 2000, 2000, yeah, all of 2000, 2003. And before you know, a lot of them didn't want to hear the commandments no more. The commandments teaches you to self-discipline, discipline your life. And that's something a lot of blacks and Latinos have a problem with, self-restraint. Because the commandments teach you to restrain the lust that's within you. Like when a scripture says, um, thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't sleep with your neighbor's wife. That law also deals with all the other sexual sins when you read Leviticus 18. It covers homosexuality, not to get involved in that. Um, dealing with a woman and her daughter at the same time. Dealing with two women at the same time. It covers a lot. So that's just an example of what the commandments does for us. <clears throat> it cleanses you. Uh, Psalms 19 and 7. Let me show you this. And this is what got a lot of brothers angry, you know. They didn't want to come out and say, I hate the commandments. Nobody ever says that. But you'll see the, the response in them. Psalm 19. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. See that? Con the law of the Lord is perfect. It converts the soul. Our souls are dirty. 
all of our souls. This is why we went into captivity, to captivity as a people. So the law of the Lord is perfect. It converts us. The word converts means changes. So if you're an adulterer, a thief, a liar, God's law is what changes you. If you are an idolater, that's what changes you. That's what fixes. That's the only thing that can fix the black and brown community. So a lot of brothers didn't like that. They, 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 a lot of them went, I remember they went to Santo Domingo. You know, in Santo Domingo, you could get a woman for cheap. Yeah. Holes all around. Yeah. So they are, they, a lot of them went, they came back. They were like, listen, we don't want to hear these commandments no more. So I left. Me, it was uh, the brother Bishop Kanai was with me. We left. And that's when 2003, we started uh, Israel United in Christ. Well, it was me by myself, really. Kanai came a little later. But that's what happened. And that's how IUIC, Israel United in Christ, started. And I let everybody know, if you come to follow this, you're going to keep these commandments. That's the only thing to clean us up. If not, because it's going to be a, a Negro fest all over again. I'm using the word Negro mm -hmm. nicely. There's another word I want to use. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it'll, it'll corrupt us all over again. So that's what happened. In my journey, one of the things that I, I notice when I run across people, because I get so much bashing on the internet because of my stance on Christ, my stance on the scriptures. Mm -hmm. If those that are in sin, if they reject the scriptures, it allows them to live comfortable. Mm -hmm. See, it's hard to accept God as we know him to be. Mm -hmm. God of Israel and live in sin comfortably. So if you just reject it all together, that that's just, you know, whatever it is, it allows you to live more comfortable in right. your sin. My position is, is that um, when I look at it is that, you know, the commandments is definitely there for us to convict us, mm -hmm. you know, but do you feel that we could follow as fleshly beings that we could follow all the commandments without flaw? Uh, yes, I believe so. I'm, I'm going to give an example. When you look at Leviticus 18, I'm going to give you a look. I remember when we was teaching in Jamaica, a young man said something very similar to that. He said, it's too hard, man, to keep the commandments. Give me one about the woman. Verse 20, 18, around 23, somewhere around there. Leviticus chapter 2, 18, verse... 20. Is that the one about the beast? Yeah. Yes. Verse 23. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself with. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. So I asked the brother. I said, is it too hard for you not to have sex with an animal? You mean to tell me that's too hard? He goes, no, I'm not. I can keep that. I said, so what's hard? He goes, I, I, I don't, he didn't have an answer. But we've heard that in church all our lives, it's too hard. Now, I know brothers make mistakes. I know brothers be, if, especially single brothers, mm -hmm. they'll be on Backpage.com looking for some butt. I, I know old that. old school. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, old school. So <laughs> I'm aware of that. But there's something called repentance. Absolutely. You know, you fall, Scripture says a righteous man falls seven times and he gets up. Absolutely. But don't make that your lifestyle of committing adultery. Don't make it a lifestyle of prostitution. Like, uh. Corinthians chapter 6. Let me show you about dealing with prostitutes. Uh, and I'll say this about prostitution. Some brothers, there's some brothers in the Israelite community who buy prostitutes. And you know what I want, right? Chapter 6, six around and, uh, 17, 17. Somewhere around there. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse uh, 18. Okay. Flee fornication. Read above that. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one nope, spirit. above that. Verse 16. What? 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? A harlot, some about a prostitute. A woman, Absolutely. and a harlot, and she ain't got to be the girl on the corner selling her butt. She could be the girl next door. All you got to buy her is a happy meal. She'll give you some butt. Go ahead. God forbid. Mm, God forbid. The answer's no. What? Know ye not that, the, that he that which joined to an harlot is one body for two so said he. Come on, stop, stop. Read it right. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Right. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Right. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Mm -hmm. Flee fornication. That's what I wanted. Flee fornication. So fornication is dealing with a woman that's not your wife. You're going from woman to woman to woman. That's fornication. 
And as young, especially young men, I let the young men know. I said, listen, you're not of a marriageable age. You don't have a job to take care of yourself. Abstain. You need to live an abstinent life until you're able to provide for yourself, get your mind right. Then you can take care of a woman and a family. Because once you say wife, you're saying mother. That involves children. You got to be able to provide. And that's not been taught in the, in the Christian or black community. As a young man, I grew up, they t- you know, you, the more butt you get from a woman, that makes you a man. That's not what the Bible says. You know, Proverbs 12 and 8 says a man shall be uh, counted worthy according to his wisdom. But that's not taught. You understand? Read that Proverbs uh, 12 and 8 for me real quick. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 8. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom. See, a man shall be commended according to his wisdom. Today's society, a man is commended according to how many women he had. You had 20 women? Whoa! You know, and, it, and, and that's how you're known as a man. Like, uh, I have children, right? Yeah, they all have children. We, we let all the young men know, all the women, brothers that got kids, there's to be no boyfriend and girlfriend. Your daughter should not have a girl, your go- daughter should not have a boyfriend, uh, your son should not have a girlfriend. All that deals with prostitution. I'm gonna explain myself. Mm-hmm. God, no people look at me. What are you talking about? Leviticus 19:29. Let me show you what I mean by that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be in whore. Now, when we were young, when I was, at least I'll use me, for example, I won't use you. Myself, as a young man, when you have a girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. You take it to the movies. You didn't go there to watch the movie. You sat in the back. Then you come back to your homeboy. They said, you get some? Go, yes, yeah, smell my fingers, smell my fingers. <laughs> you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, of course. You're a mm-hmm. prostitute. You, as, long, as long as you have, as, if there's a girlfriend, she's your hoe. You're not with her. I'm 15. Well, I'm, I can't take care of no wife. That's my, asking me. Whitfield. that's my girlfriend. <laughs> you fingering her, you popping her, you sexing her. You understand? Mm-hmm. It's all prostitution, okay? Or it falls under that umbrella of prostitution, and cause a lot, and that has to be taught in the black and brown community. We're not taught that. We're taught the sexy the girl is, the better. No, no, that's whoredom. Cause when you read the verse in its entirety again, watch what it says. Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse twenty-nine: Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom. And the land become full of wickedness. The land become full of wickedness. A lot of young girls today, where they get the STDs, the genital warts? Because young men was having sex with them. Left and right. We wasn't sexing them to marry them. We were just sexing them just to get our rocks off. A little bit of pleasure. Five minutes of pleasure. That's all I want. And now disease is in a, in a black and brown community. And we go, why is this happening to us? Why are we suffering like this? Because we're breaking God's commandments. And until we come back to them commandments, we gonna stay on a low state. So I let my daughters know that, no boyfriends for you. My sons, no, no girlfriends for you. Not until you come of age and you get married. That's the law that has to be taught. Yeah, I definitely accept that, but let me give you a little history on me. So um, me and my queen, we've been together since I was 15 years old. Mm. And the moment, the first time that I ever laid eyes on her, the first thing that came out of my mouth to my partner was, that's my wife. Mm. That's good. Oh, praises. So, I, however that might, you know, mm-hmm. work out, you know, that, yeah, that's from 15 years old. From right. The child. We, I was like, uh, I, we, I like to joke about like Urkel and Laura. You know, <laughs> that, you yeah. know, that, that was very much me. And I, mm. I was like a nerd, you know, private school. She went to Catholic school. She was, you know, too, but she was hip. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't hip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was, you know, a nerd and she was popular and, you know, and, mm. you know, but I knew it was from God, you know. Like, I mean, the moment the door opened up because mm. he was dating her best friend. Right. You know, they set us up, you know, and the moment the door opened up and I looked at her, I turned to him. Oh, praise. That's good. Uh, and y'all been together since then? Since then. That's good. You know, That's good. All, all of these years. We've had our ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've been together all, all of these years. Oh, I've been with my wife since 19, 19 years old. So, so I'm sure you understand. Yes, I understand. 
So with that being said, um, what's your position on the sanctity of marriage? Hebrews 13 and 4. Watch that. I'm going to always let the Bible speak, unless you ask me as something. We, as, we, as, as we should. Yes. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers? Whoremongers, that's you jumping from woman to woman, or her going from man to man, that's a whoremonger. And adulterers, that's a married person dealing outside the marriage. God will judge. God judges us with death and sexually transmitted diseases. That's how he judges us, if we don't see marriage as an honorable institution. Marriage was the first law given to man, well, actually behind the Sabbath, then when man and woman came, Adam and Eve, black by the way, he put them together. That was marriage, that was the beginning. All this hop, bunny hopping we doing today, it gotta be, we killing this thing right there. We teach them from wherever we go, city to city, state to state, country to country, we teaching this, okay? And people are shocked, especially the Christian church. You know, we've had Christian churches attack us because they don't want to hear God's laws. And you know, me, when I grew up in the church, we were whoremongers. So I, we, I was in Union Baptist Church in 145th Street, Harlem, up there. And we'd be in... And what, the Union. Yeah. We'd be messing with the girls, you know, down in the basement. It was, it was, there was no law because they taught us God's law is done away with. God's law is done away with. And uh, there was deacons and deaconesses sexing each other, not their spouse, mind you. So I saw a lot of filth. I grew up in a filthy state of mind because that's what the black church has primarily taught. Okay, Now we're coming into the truth. We're the children of Israel. We're supposed to keep these commandments. The reason we went into slavery, give me that in Deuteronomy 28, 15. Because the people ask, why, do we, why are we oppressed? Why do we suffer as a race, as a people? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if we broke the commandments, now this is Moses speaking to us. He said, if you break the commandments, these curses are going to come upon you. People often ask, what's the true religion? What is God's point of view on that? When you read the Bible, there's no uh, religious denomination mentioned. Catholic ain't in the Bible. No. Pentecostal ain't in there. Baptist no. ain't in there. A Seventh-day Adventist, Jordan, none of that's in there. Islam ain't in there. It's only the commandments. From Old Testament to New, to New Testament, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments. And we've been taught to ignore that. Verse 32, please. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Slavery. Talk about slavery. So this is why we as a people have gone from, been taken from the continent, taken from to country, to country, to country, because the sub-Sahara slave trade, they took a lot of our people to Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Turkey, Iraq, Iran, India, and they're forgotten. We just started reaching out, going to uh, Pakistan and India, finding our people over there. Then the transatlantic slave trade, they took us to European countries, America, Canada, uh, Central America, South America, Europe. So all these curses have come upon us. That's, when, that's why Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He warned us again. We like, oh, no, no, I'm not keeping those commandments. Oh, don't suffer. Stay oppressed and you're going to die in captivity. And that's what a lot of people have to come to uh, an odds with. They got to come and say, I either want to keep the commandments and live in Christ or die breaking the commandments. And that the die I'm talking about is the eternal damnation. That's what I'm talking about. So one of the things that um, I go through, um, all right, so one thing with the church, do you believe that you can have an organization or have something that 95% of the people don't have to be Five percent of what it, the true message really is, because say for instance, you have those that claim to be Hebrew Israelite mm -hmm. that obviously might not take the same position with you and the same understanding, the same doctrine, and might be whoremongers, like you earlier said, might be buying whores and stuff like that. That could happen in any movement, and 
just because that happened, that doesn't mean that the teachings that originally, you know, which is all based to those scriptures. Mm -hmm. is right, correct. So sometimes I think I hear attack on the church, mm -hmm. which I know to be the body of Christ, mm -hmm. and associated with a building with people that is not of the body of Christ. I think um, from my position, we should be careful with that because there are those that is of the body of Christ. There are those that follow those scriptures. There are those that keep those commandments that is not the same as the people you're describing, not you personally, the people that people describe mm -hmm. in the church when the attack goes out on so-called Christianity. Christianity. Give me the X7. So-called. Uh, So-called Christianity. I, I definitely want to ex ex show you this in Acts chapter 7 <clears throat> about the body of Christ. The church. Mm -hmm. Who is the church according to the biblical text? Read Acts chapter 7 verse 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you and your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai. So in the Bible, the church was only the children of Israel, the 12 mm -hmm. tribes. Christianity has now said, no, now it's anything else we say. That's not biblical. This is what when, I, when we, we have what we call a church blitz. Some of the churches see the church blitz. And when I say churches, I'm talking about what people... Today, modern thinking, Baptist, uh, Episcopalian, Mormon, that's what they think. We have a church blitz where we sit down. We, we contact the minister and we say, hey, we'd like to sit down with you and show you what we see in the scriptures, which could help fix the black community, help fix our people. I'd say nine out of ten of them reject and say, no, we're not teaching the commandments to the people. So then what is your solution? They said there is no solution. They got to wait till Jesus come back. So, and we're telling them that's wrong. That's, we have to be prepared for when Christ return. You can't say, say an adulterer and when Christ come back, he going to clean you up. That's not how, that's not written. So they take, they have a problem with that. In the Bible, the church is only the 12 tribes of Israel. No matter, the Thessalonians, right? Mm -hmm. The Corinthians, all Israelites. Romans, those are the Israelites in Rome. But today, Pope, I'm going to give you the history real quick. Pope Nicholas V, y'all can look him up, Pope Nicholas V. He wrote a papal bull and said, enslave anybody that does not follow our form of Christianity, which was white supremacy, white Jesus, white angels, white God, white Jews. If you didn't follow that, they said enslave them. That's what the church did, that uh, 1440. Y'all can look it up, Google it. It's all on the internet. They, the Catholic church started the transatlantic slave trade. Then you had the Protestant reform reformation. The Protestants kept us in slavery too. The white Protestants, that, they started the Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witness, Baptist, Pentecostal. They kept us in slavery. So all that we know in our mind as the church those are the people that enslaved and destroyed our understanding, destroyed our mentality, destroyed our families, even until this day. And, and now they allow us to come up, you could be a preacher now, mm. as a Pentecostal preacher, but they keep the same rhetoric going. Uh, Jesus is white, all right? Now the Israelites were on the rise, and we challenge the pastors. Jesus is not white in the Bible. You know what they say? It doesn't matter what he looks like, it's his message. But then, Here's a question. If they gave us a false Jesus, you think they gave us the true message? Well, I'm going to show you that. Watch this, 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. I've got to show you this. I need everybody to pay attention. False Jesus means false gospel. Watch what it says. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For he that cometh preached another for, Jesus. Let me read it right. For if he that cometh preached another Jesus, whom we have not preached. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. So let's pause there. Where in the Bible does it say Jesus had pink skin, blonde hair, and blue eyes? 
it's not in there. Read it again. For if he that cometh preached another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received. So what comes with another Jesus? Another spirit. Go ahead. Or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. What comes with a false Jesus? Another spirit and another gospel. So the gospel that our people are following, a Caucasian man saving black people, no, it's not, it's not Bible. You, got a, you were taught a false Jesus, which means, how did they keep us in slavery then? Where was, with the chains on our necks and arms, where was for God so loved the world then? That was never preached to us. We were, we were slave chattel, okay? Cattle, as they call it. We were property. So for God so loved the world, he gave us, that didn't apply to us for centuries. Now when we got emancipated, and we're saying, hey, remember Marcus Garvey was coming up? Many black revolutionaries. So they say, hey, we got a new plan. Got a new plan. For use John 3.16. That's what the church did. Use verses on love to get them black people in order. Get them subdued again. You had the Klan come up. You had va these various church groups. And they said, okay, we're all one. We're equal in Jesus now. Oh, now we're equal in Jesus. So, but they never taught us we're the children of Israel. We're the people that were with Moses. So they're still lying to us to a large degree, and it keeps us subdued to their feet. But now this truth is coming out. No, no, no. We're more than Negroes. We're the Israelites. We're the people of Jesus. We're the people of Moses. We're the people of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Now, like Putin, you saw the news? Putin, Putin opened the vault. Bam! He said, Jesus has always been black. And it's like, wait a minute. If Jesus is black, that means his people are black. And that means when he returned, there's going to be a judgment for enslaving his black people. And nobody want to talk about that. Putin playing games with people, bro. <laughs> no, that, that's very powerful, the Putin thing. Um, I would like to, uh, so you said that you was raised in church. Yes. I would think back to like your grandmom. Do you, was, you, did, did you, was she a strong Christian? Yep. Mm -hmm. Did she follow the scripture? She would read the scriptures. She always had the Bible. She'd be like this, just read it. And she would read primarily John 3, 16, over and over and over. So when I would ask, you know, kids, you ask questions. What does Jesus look like? What does God look like? She had a picture of white Jesus on the wall. She so would she, point to it? Yeah, she, that, that's Jesus right there. So I grew up like that. Yeah. So when I, so when I heard, I remember one day I asked my mom, I read Song of Solomon 1 and 5, I am black. And come here, all your daughters address it. What does that mean? It don't mean nothing, boy. Sit down. Don't it mean he black? No, it don't mean that. So I would shut up and I was okay. But then later on, I found that Solomon was black. And I found the archaeology, the the old paintings of him as a black man. You know, what's funny is um, I ask elders that now. That'd be one of my main things to ask elders, like my father, you know, and everything. He told, they never taught me that Jesus was white. Mm. So that was never a part of my upbringing. That was never taught to me. And some of the most strongest Christ-like people that I have ever met, you know what I'm saying, that I honor, that I only could like look up to and hope that I could get on their level are in those scriptures, mm. you know? So again, when I can never cast them out and I can never associate them with these other people, you know, and I think it gets bunched together. It should not be bunched together just like the Hebrew Israelites that practice one way shouldn't be bunched together with the whole thing. Because one of the questions I will ask you is about, again, we were speaking about marriage. Mm -hmm. Can I have a wife? Can I go marry another wife? Well, go, get that in First Timothy. Well, here's the answer. Mm -hmm. First Timothy 3. Book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 1. This is, this is a true saying. You know saying. what I like better? I like 1 Corinthians 7 and 2 better. Oh, yes, sir. 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, sexual sins, to avoid sexual sins, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Now, Timothy 3 and 2. 1 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband... The word bishop means head or leader. Go ahead. 
the husband of one wife. So now people can go out and do whatever they want, but it don't change what's written. I understand. You know? <laughs> but I've had, again, so-called Hebrew Israelites mm. try to take my head off and tell me that you can marry more than one wife. Mm. I had brothers right online, right on the internet, battle me about these same, you know, issues. But right. I don't bunch them together because now you're explaining to me something that is in alliance with what I understand mm -hmm. yes. about the scripture. So exactly. that's just to show you it all shouldn't, you know, I don't think it all should be bunched together. I understand what you're saying. I was, I would, I would word it like this. There are people in our lives, like my grandmother, people even at Union Baptist Church, that I love dearly. But at the same time, no matter how much I may love somebody, I gotta, I gotta start with myself first. Compare, I gotta measure my life. Give me that First Corinthians 15 and three about, you know, so, uh, examine. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? First Corinthians, second, first 13. And 13 five. and five, thank you. Okay. First, second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse five. Sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse five. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. So now, starting with me, I gotta examine myself. I could say, I'm a God-fearing man. But when I'm studying the scriptures, looking at the law, I have to compare my life to this, what this says. And it's going to be two decisions I have to make. Either I'm going to conform to what God says, or I'm going to close my eyes to what he says and do me. And that's what I see with a lot of people that I love. I may love personally. I may love my grandmothers, which I do. Grandmothers, my grandfathers, aunts, uncles, people in the church. But when I look, at what God says, and I look at what's being done and said, I'm like, no, that's not what this says. So that makes a distinction. That's what we all got to do, you know? Like some people, like in the church, they eat uh, unclean foods. And I, by reading the scriptures, you know, like pork is an abomination to God. I say, oh, no, we're not supposed to eat that. I grew up on eating pork. Chitlins and all of that. I did. I did. Down south, grew up in the south. So all that was there in the Bible, and I'm like, but we're in church eating pork. And I'm like, wait a minute. This says we ain't supposed to be doing that. So that's just an example, the, which goes with- I like um, you keep saying some. Hmm? I like you keep saying some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there may be people, you know, I don't know everybody on the planet Earth, yeah. but I know like when I go, I went to Ghana for a couple of years, visited a couple of times in years. I seen Caucasian images of Jesus all throughout the black continent and the churches, with, they had white Jesus billboards. They had waters with white Jesus on the water. And I'm like, who is this guy? They go, Jesus. I'm like, that ain't in the Bible. <laughs> so these are just examples. Mm -hmm. And it were people you love that you adore. But don't let your love for anybody Doesn't make this. Scripture. Right, Wait, exactly. Doesn't over Trump scripture. Exactly, don't Trump scripture. Um, uh, who is Jesus? Christ is, give me that John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. We all know this. Christ is the Messiah. He's the Son of God. He created, when you read John 1, he created everything. The Father chose him to create everything. Read that. The book of John, chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Jump down to 14. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Right. Full of grace and truth. So that's Christ. He's God, the Son of God. He's also called our Messiah, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. When you read Revelation, it tells you those titles he was given. Okay. When I hear that, you know, um, I think so. Every son must have a father mm -hmm. and a mother. So who would be his mother? <laughs> well, if we're talking about him on the earth, give me that in John 1. No, but I would take what you okay. agree to. Give me that. John 1. Verse 1? No. What is uh, 45? Verse 40, John chapter 1 and verse Is 40. it 45? Mm, what does it say, find it from Nathaniel? Yep, 47. John chapter 1, verse 46, I'll say. 
And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Okay. Nathanael said unto him, Whence comest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, oh, it's Verse 45. Verse, verse 45. 45. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. That's what I wanted, the son of Joseph. Because that's another um, thing that we were taught in the church, uh, that Christ didn't have an earthly, I'm talking about earthly right now, earthly father, uh, that he was of immaculate birth, uh, meaning no earthly father, which goes back to Egypt with uh, Isis, Horus, and Ra which goes to Babylon, you had Ceramesis and uh, Nimrod and Tammuz. All of those are old religions that was incorporated today into what they call modern uh, Christianity. Okay, but back to your question again. I, I, this is, that question is the same question that I would ask a minister, one of these, like you said, Baptist, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. anyone that says, because, you know, again, I don't claim to know anything, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I study the scriptures and I have questions, you right. know, to, and I would like to have understanding so I can come into the light like anyone else. I'm yes, sir. work in progress. When I hear son, it's just logical. Mm -hmm. If he is the son and you quote a scripture that he created existence, he mm -hmm. created every, the heavens, the earth, and everything under the earth, who's his mother? Because if he's a son, that's a mother. Well, when you read, go to Genesis with Adam. Let me show you this. We can't, what we try to do is compare the, the way flesh is to spirit. Spirit and flesh, two separate things. Okay, I'll give an example. Wait, before you get there, let me show you Melchizedek, what it says about him. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 2 and 3. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Watch this. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually. That's in the spirit realm. The spirit realm does not operate like the flesh. In the flesh, from the time of Adam and Eve, you got to have a father and a mother, but that's not in the spirit realm. Okay, that's not how the spirit realm operates. We want to make it so, but that's not how it is. So you would say he has no mother, just right. the father. Right, right. Father create everything. He's God. Like when you read, it says, let us make man in our image. I mean, it's plural, mm -hmm. meaning more than one. Okay, get that for us. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6. And God's, well, in verse 26. 26. Revelation, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness and let them have dominion over the flesh, I'm sorry, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. That's all I wanted. And give me 2 Ezra 6 and uh, 3. Watch this. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6 and verse, you said 3? Yep. Verse 3. Before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together. Even the angels were not made with mother and father. The Lord made them. Because when you read the verse above it, read the verse above it. Verse 2. Before it thundered and lightened, or ever the foundation of paradise were laid. So it's telling you the beginning of everything. And it tells you about the innumerable number of angels that was made. They didn't have a mommy and daddy like the way we think mommy and daddy. It was not, it's not like that. Okay? And that's what we're going to learn more of when the Lord returns. We're going to see that. Okay, that's a good mm -hmm. answer. You know, like I'm just trying to understand. Yes, sir. So um, one of the questions that I have is... Um, does God have a wife? Does God have a wife? It's not written in the scripture that he has a wife. Oh, us. So, but give me that. Give me that, Jeremiah. Jeremiah I'll, go to, that's, I'll go to Jeremiah 314. The book of Jeremiah. I'm, chapter, well, you go ahead, read it. Chapter 3, verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married unto you. Yes. 
So the wife is the children of Israel. The wife is the children of Israel. When you said wife, I'm, I'm, my first thought was there's a woman with him mm. ruling everything. That was my right. what I So thought. when I hear that, I had the next question that comes to me again, just trying to learn. Who's the bride of Christ? The children. Read it again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 14. Oh, here, I got another one. Give me 2 Corinthians. 11, 2? Yeah, give me that one. I like that one in conjunction with what we just read. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous over you with, I'm sorry, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Right. So... Oh, here's another one. I'm going to show another one. Just bear with me. Revelation 14 and four. I think one through four around there. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse four. Start at one. Verse one. And I looked, and lo, a slam stood on the Mount read it, Sinai. Read it right, not slam. It does oh, not sorry. say slam. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sinai, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their, in their foreheads. Jump to verse four. Verse four. These are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. So his bride is the 144, 144,000, which is 12,000 of all of the tribes of the children of Israel. And it says, and he's a man. He's a man. So that's the bride, that's a virgin. Not, and when it says, read that part again, not, read it again. These are they which were not defiled with woman. For they are virgins. When it says not defiled with woman, that goes back to Adam and Eve. Remember how she defiled Adam mm -hmm. with the serpent because she got in his ear and he listened. So the 144 is going to do, what if God says A, we're going to do A. If my wife says B, eh, hold the brakes. I'm not, uh-uh. We're going to do this. We're going to do what A says, what God says here. So that's an example of not being defiled by woman. You understand? Yeah. Okay, good. I'll praise. Yeah, I try, <laughs> that's why I'm trying to understand, you know, because, um, so the 144,000, mm -hmm. which could be depicted as Israel. Which is Israel. You know. Oh, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You say could be depicted. Give me Revelation 7. For I'm going to show you this Israel. Revelation. The book of Revelation. And not those, I not those I, white I folks over there. I don't disagree. Okay. I just, hey, for the people, I just got to show that. Revelation 7, verse 4. And I heard. The number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousands of all tribes of the children of Israel. Right. So the one forty-four is not Jehovah Witness, Catholics, Baptists. It's our people coming out of that, believing that they're the Israelites, coming back to that truth, keeping the commandments. That's it. And watch this, 14 and 12. I need to stress this because I came out of the Baptist church. Some of our brothers came out of Islam. Some came out of Catholicism. I came out of God body. All praises. Watch this. The this book, is what we got to one one we got to have one mind when it comes to this. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You need those two things. You must keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Faith of Jesus means he's our king. He's our lord. Okay? He's our commanding officer. He's our commander in chief like it says in Isaiah. So we got to believe that. We got to honor that. We got to follow that. Okay? Some people don't accept that. So, hey, I can't help them. I accept it totally. I just, I ask that question because, again, for me, I want to understand if God says, God the Father says, Israel, you are my wife. Mm -hmm. But then the bride of Christ, from my understanding, the son cannot marry the father's wife, which would his mother, you know, like, mm -hmm. so who wife is who, you know, is oh, look, he I'll, the I'll explain it. or is he the son wife? Uh, let me explain it. Get me John 8. I got to show you. This is going to shock some people. This is going to shock some of y'all. Just bear me, me say John 8 <clears throat> before Abraham. Okay, 50. The book of John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. So Christ says, I am, Exodus 3.14. Yes, now here's the precept. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, 
in verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt, thou, thus and thou shalt, thus, Stop. Stop. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. That's all I want. I am that I am. So who was that speaking? That was Christ speaking. Absolutely. Yes, that was Christ. So he's letting you know from John 8. He said, oh, the, the one you thought you were speaking to in the wilderness, that, that was me. Okay. He's, he's letting Israel know that. So like in the, people argue about uh, God's name, Yahweh, which is the Hebrew term of Jehovah, which is I am or he is. That was Christ back then. Absolutely. Speaking to us. And that's what some people don't understand. I'm totally with you. Oh, praise. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> I'm totally with you on that. Man. You know, one thing that um, I was reading a quote, and I love it. Frederick Douglass said, um, he said, it's easier to build um, strong men, strong boys, than it is to repair broken men. Our people, the men are talking about, are broken broken mentally, broken spiritually. And it's like we're getting, we're trying to put the piece, putting glue to put their mind back together because we're all fragmented. Yes. We've Absolutely. been divided uh, with nationalities. Yes. Uh, these are all plots of Satan. We've been divided by national. Like, for example, he come from Haiti, I'm from America, let's say you're from Jamaica. Barbados. We're all three of them, Barbados. We're all three on the same slave ship. Yes. They say, drop this one off. Now, let's say we're all brothers, they, which we are. Drop him off in Haiti. Drop him in America. Drop him in Barbados. Now we go, we think we're three different people. We're broken. That's uh, nationality, nationalities. Then the white man says, let's get, in case that doesn't work, give them different religions. You Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, or Islam, whatever. Then political groups. Republican, Democrat, conservative, whatever. And we and we all and all those three things I mentioned, we argue. When Ephesians, watch this, Ephesians 4, watch this. I need everybody to pay attention. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Now I'll give you three examples. They divided us um, with our nationalities, divided us religiously, divided us politically. But watch what Ephesians 4 and 3 says. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity, see the word unity, of the spirit in the bond of peace. Right. There is one body. There is one body and one spirit. One spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One hope of your calling. One right. Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. Yeah. One God. One the, God. And the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Unity. Absolutely. This Bible is about the unification of the 12 tribes of Israel. And what we tend to do, we allow ourselves to remain divided. Although this book unites us, if we follow the same precepts, it unites us. But what happens is, if I like adultery, I'm not gonna follow that. Our people in the, in the world, okay, that don't really deal, they, they, they remain divided in these various religious groups. And we sit down with Catholic ministers, Baptist ministers, Pentecostal, and we say, hey, we're the Israelites. That's the unifying force, us keeping the commandments in Christ. That unifies us. No, I don't accept that. I was born a Baptist. I'm going to die a Baptist. And it keeps the dysfunction in the black community. We're broken. What, one of the questions I want to know is, you know, I definitely, I, I, if you follow, I definitely, Christ, what make us an Israelite? Our bloodline, okay? Not only the bloodline, because watch this. Let me show, give me that Leviticus uh, 26, 46, and I'm going to show you mm -hmm. the spirit. Leviticus 26. Leviticus. It's around 45 or 46. You know what I'm talking about? The statue is no 45. Nope. Ancestors? Yep. Leviticus one. chapter 26, verse 45. But I will for their... Well, but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors. Of their ancestors. Ancestry is important. So now, when we move up, uh, Romans 9, Romans 9 verse 4, what Paul says, start at 3, 3 and 4 is what I want. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse, give me a second, come on. 3 and verse 4. Start at 3. Verse 3, but what if some did not believe? You're in Romans 9, 3 and 4? Romans chapter 9 verse 3, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. Now what does that mean? Paul says he wished he could take on the curses 
for his brethren. The curse is a slavery and oppression that we read in Deuteronomy 20. He said, I wish I could take all that on myself for my brethren. Read it again. For, for I could wish that my, myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. According to what? According to the flesh. Go ahead. Who are Israelites. So it's very important. According to the flesh who are Israelites. That goes back to ancestry. Now you may say, well, in slavery, they cut us off. We really don't know our, who our fathers, 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 which is true. Mm. But watch, and watch verse 8. Verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh. No, the, uh, for they're not all Israel. Oh, no. verse, right above it, right, right above right, it. Verse 7. Neither because they are of the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac. No, nope, above that. Come on, for they're not all Israel. For they're not all Israel. Verse mm. It's right around here somewhere. Verse, let me look for it. Verse 11. Hold on. Verse. Hold on. Let me find it. Mm -hmm. Bear with me a second, y'all. Six, 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 yeah. For neither. Oh, that's what I read. For not, for not as though their word of God hath not taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, read, which are of Israel. Stop, read it again. Yes, sir. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So what does that part mean? We're not all going to wake up to the truth that we're Israel and must keep the commandments. So when Paul comes back, because he knew, remember, his fellow kinsmen, the Jews, delivered Christ to Rome. Yes. Okay? Those same spirits are back today. Yes. Remember they said, is Christ your king? Our people, the elders said, no, we have no king but Caesar. <laughs> That's the same thing today. Yeah. A lot of Both our people them. say, our only king is this white man, American government. That's who they serve. They don't, they say, I ain't never, we've heard ministers say, I will never serve a black Christ. He will always be white. So we can't help them. They're broken. Yes. And it's hard to repair those spirits, you know? Those, those who will speak that way is just a, <laughs> I mean, no, I don't sit. And that's one of the things that I go through a lot again, because I don't sit nowhere with any of that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To me, when you say Christian, I say Christ-like. You know what I'm saying? But whether people understand what I'm saying or not, that's, you know, I don't think that those who are Christ-like should be associated with Christians. Mm -hmm. Because we understand that in Antioch is where they called us first Christian. And they called the disciples right. Christian. Correct. And it was because they looked and they resembled in their mannerism mm -hmm. of Christ. That's right. So how did we now mix Christian into this? Whole other thing. That's you right. Know what I'm saying so. That's so you understand. I understand. That's who I am. That's right. my position. I would never say I'm a Christian because to me that's an adjective. Mm -hmm. If you look at my ways in action and you say he's a Christian, I wear it with honor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. I understand what you yeah, mean. Hundred you know, percent. So that is, you know, where I'm at, and I think many people get that confused. Right. right. You know, if if you look at, you see what's going on in Gaza yes, today, right? Yes, absolutely. I was going to ask you about that. There are Christians marching in protest. There are Christians praying that this end. And I, I may feel, let's say, the fleshly side of me will feel bad, but the spirit side of me, the God in me knows it must come. To, give me that Amos one about Gaza. A lot of our people, we want the Lord to return, but we don't want his word to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. yep. He's not coming back until his word is fulfilled. Read that Amos one. Amos chapter one and verse six. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carried away the captive, the whole captivity to deliver them unto Edom. So Gaza, which are the Arabs, they delivered our people to white men when they enslaved us. Now their judgment time. So God is saying, I'm going to punish Gaza. Now he's using the devil, these so-called, these fake people that say they're the Jew, to do it. So I sit back, Lord's will be done. Although I might feel bad, oh, no, mm -mm. I understand, because I understand the history. When I read the Bible, God said, Gaza delivered us up to slavery to Edom. The church don't understand none of this. So they're protesting against it. We got to pray to God to stop this. It's going to go on for quite a while. It's going to go on. And there's more judgment. China going to get it. Japan going to get it. America going to get it. Everybody, we got it.
We broke the law, we went to slavery, we punished. Now it's the other nation's turn. You know, I got ate up all over the internet for saying that. Yeah? They try, oh man. <laughs> oh man. I mean, he follows, he knows how much they ate me up for that. Mm. They went ballistic on me for saying that. Because I had, I had something with Dr. Omar and I tried to explain to him that we were enslaved because of sin. Mm -hmm. And oh man, to this day, you know what I'm saying? To this day, I look over my phone and they laughing me out. You know what I'm saying? Making, you know, great time. But I tried to explain to them that was like the same scriptures in Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. That was a punishment because of our sin. That's right. You know, and Correct. until we actually break sin, mm -hmm. we're still under the same curse of death. That's right. Until we break our sins. So, there you go. You know, I'm totally with you, but the understanding of it, I know, is mm -hmm. unfortunately hard for right. us. When you look at a map of Africa, you see how the Arabs got all of North Africa, right? Absolutely. People don't ask, how did they get North Africa when it was all black people there? Mm -hmm. the, the same thing the white man's doing to the, them in Gaza today, those same Arabs did to us during the sub-Saharan slave trade. They slaughtered us throughout North Africa and sold us in Saudi Arabia as slaves, Mauritania, Libya. They sent us to Iran, Iraq. Only difference is there was no cameras back then. Okay, but now there's cameras on Gaza. So you see little kids bleeding and crying, you feel bad. But as spiritual men and women of the Lord, we gotta know this is prophecy. And it's going to, everything this book says, whether you, accept, give me the Romans three, whether you accept or not, shall they, shall they unbelief, I want that part. Whether you accept or not, or agree with it, it's going to happen. I want all the black uh, intellectuals out there to understand that. Read that for me. Romans chapter three and verse three. For what if some did not believe? What if you don't believe what this Bible says? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. That means no. So the fact that brothers and sisters make a joke of this, it don't mean the Bible's going to change. They laughed at when we came out of Egypt. Moses said, if you break the law, you're going to slavery again. We said, ah, we didn't believe Moses. Here we are, slavery again, because we didn't believe. We mocked Moses. Okay, remember the, uh, during the time of Christ, they said, let his blood be on us and our, our children. Look what happened. Rome destroyed us. So many of our black intellectuals, they mocked this Bible, but the joke's on you. <laughs> they wanted to worship Baal. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing about our black intellectuals, this is our, these brothers that speak very eloquently. They use big words in it. Remember Romans 16, 7. I'm going to show you what the Bible says about that. I went through that. Yes. The book of Romans chapter 16 and verse 7. 17. 17, sorry. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. Meaning they go against the Bible. Which ye have learned, and avoid them. Mm -hmm. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't serve the King Jesus Christ. But their own belly. They serve their own belly. And by good words. And by good words. And fair speeches. They can speak lovely. Deceive the hearts of the simple. They deceive the hearts of the simple. You talk, you tell, like our people, like our, when I hear a black man say, I hear this a lot. The black woman is God, brother. She's God. I said the same black woman that from 1973 up until now murdered 19 million babies in abortions? She's God? She's God, brother. You mean the same black woman that goes to court on Mondays and gets all for child support? She's God. She's God. That's, that's, uh, that's pimp talk. The get in women's panties. And the woman ain't figured that out yet. Sister, you're not God. You're not God. You're a woman. You come from me. You come from a man. Woman. Yeah, exactly. So... And it's like, but these brothers who talk good has convinced the black woman she's a god on earth. I heard, a, I heard a brother say, I don't know if you know, you may know him, I don't know him, but I've seen a video named Brother Polite. Mm -hmm. He was teaching the black women can have a baby with the Bartholin gland, she don't need a man. And I'm like, where has this, I'd like to see that done. Now, you saw what happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not making mockery of him. No. I pray that mm -hmm. this turns around for him and he gets out of prison. I, wish, I don't wish bad on our people, mm -hmm. but I know God's judgment is on all of us. Get Colossians 3.25. Whatever we say, Christ said, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account of. When, and idle words is us speaking against this. Yes. Now, Polite shot up the Bible. I saw a video. He, him and another brother, they had an AK. Bah, 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 shot the Bible up. Watch what it says. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 25. 
But he that do it wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. Mm -hmm. And there is no respect of person. Now Galatians 1 and 6. I'm showing you, God, whatever you do, there's a repercussion, cause and effect. Is it Galatians 1 and 6? I'm over to say sumo move. Uh, where it says he's not mocked. That one. God is not mocked. Oh, yeah, no. it's in there somewhere. It's, uh, watch this. Get me Galatians 1, 6, and, it's Galatians 6 and 7. I'm sorry, it's my fault. The book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Uh, Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Cause and effect. Cause and, you're not going to mock God's word and think you're going to get away with it. Okay? And that, that's the mistake a lot of our people do. Well, I don't believe that Bible. Ah, and then things happen. You know, most high God, he's going to show you his power. You're either going to accept it or not. You know? Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of our people was, um, I think, a lot oh, they had of- a rebellious, stiff-necked. Yeah, and I think we, we got, at some point, we didn't see the Bible as being salvation, and, and you know, and we got pulled away by the devil, you know, through the air, mm -hmm. through other forced religions and other forced things because of our situation. Correct. Uh, that we were in, and that has misguided the people. Then a lot of the, the grandmothers, mm -hmm. the grandmothers that we knew to be strong, died, you mm -hmm. know, and the generation after them, something happened there, you know. Um, at some point, we can never erase the crack ep epidemic. Right. That affected our people mm -hmm. in a way that you know, it's almost no way to come back from it. Right, um, the American government did that to yeah. us. They put and that in our at communities. At the same time that they affected us with the crack, they affected us with rap music, mm -hmm. you know, and... Not conscious yeah, rap. not conscious rap. Right, I'm, right. Not talking, I'm talking about the gangster rap, yes. the rap that took black love off the table. That's right. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. And made us start looking at black women as whores and it ain't mm -hmm. no fun unless my homie have some. You know what I'm saying? I grew up and saw both. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I grew up as a child and we got to see the tail end of what was real. And then my generation was the generation that went into the, you know, it ain't no fun if my homie can't have it. Right. And that, that hurt us as a exactly. people exactly. in a way. And yes, there had to be some type of systematic setup. You know yes, it was. Because if you would have had the ex-clans and the poor righteous teachers and the careless ones and very diff various different ones that were positive, even mm -hmm. though they might have not been dealing on the right doctrine, Understand. but they were positive. Yes. And mm -hmm. we would have had nations of that growing up, this would be a different, Correct. a different place right now. So But that's not Satan's agenda. You know, you know, absolutely. You know, like, because that would have led us back to this and more righteousness. So they, this, the powers that be, Ephesians 6, 12, said we got to dismantle this, shut it down. So they turned conscious rap to gangster rap. Now you got drill music today. Yeah, yeah. And it's detrimental. Now we it's got- Dollar gangster rap. Yes. Yeah. You got women talking about like little people, like little Kim. That was one of the first ones I heard a woman talk like that. Yeah. I know there was one- Back in the day, Mel Moms, Mabley, and Melba, can't remember her name, but they talked dirty. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a lot. It was maybe one or two. They didn't have a lot following right. like her. But yeah. now, it's like crazy. Read that for us. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So the powers that be sat down and had a meeting. And said, how can we get takes conscious music? Because we got to get them out of that. Because it'll lead them back to the truth eventually that they're the sons and daughters of God. We got to change that. So the rap music, just for example, manipulated that to the gangster rap. Manipulated that to the drill music that we got today. And 1 Corinthians 14, 33, all that communication, you know, whatever you feed your spirit will affect your mind, the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act. Read that. The book of... Ephesians chapter first, 15, 1 Corinthians. Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Evil communication corrupt good manners. One of the first forms of communication, music, the things we listen to, the things we speak will corrupt good manners. The good manners is God's laws. 
So society now, when I say society, I'm going to be plain. I'm talking about white folks. Mm -hmm. The Edomites in the Bible, they have think tanks. I remember working on, when I worked, when I was working before I retired, there was an old white man that had gotten robbed. And I, went, I was one of the first on the scene. I went to his house, it was in Manhattan, and he had books fill his whole apartment everywhere. And I said, I could smell the weed. So I'm taking a report and I said, um, I said, what happened? And he didn't want to say what happened. He said, just rob me. But I knew he didn't want to say what we, I said, listen, I'm not the weed police. I deal with robberies. Just tell me what happened. I said, what do you do for a living? He said, I work for a think tank. So I said, what do you mean by a think tank? He said, I get paid. He's, he was a graduate of Harvard. Mm -hmm. He said, I get paid. He said, many, many, me and many others. Our job is to think. They give us a subject. He said, like, for example, music. How can we manipulate or move society with music? He says, all these books deals with various subjects. He said, for, and he was giving me an example regarding music. So that helped me understand they have groups of Harvard graduates, Yale graduates, Oxford. Their job is how they can manipulate whole societies on various topics to the way they want it to be. Our, the so-called black community is a big topic. How can they move us to get us to where they want us to go? Now you see you got sexuality, the black woman's over-sexualized. No other race of people does music calling their women bees and hoes except black and brown people. We're the only race that does that. And we don't see nothing wrong with it. We're the only race of women talking about how she can suck it and do this. And Glorilla did a song, of, she did a rap song in front of an abortion clinic. Was that her, if I'm not mistaken? Sexy Red did a song. I thought what was the name of this thing she did. My booty brown hole and all that. Yeah. And the women hold her up as a, ah! But this is Making what these the things takes do. White folks don't do that. Yeah. Chinese don't do it. East Indians don't do that. Only our people. Why? Because we're the children of Israel. And they said we can't let them wake up. They should never wake up or else they're going to rule the planet again. And that's the fear. With that said, I want... I want the the making the stallions and the sexy reds and in and, and those that are into drill music and gangster rap. For me, it's never an attack on you. You know what I'm right. saying? We all have fall short of the glory of the Lord, but we have to come into repentance and we have to somehow come to the truth of God. You know exactly. That a hundred percent. Yeah, we have to sit down and you know crack this book. We have to see that the road that we on is detrimental to our people. Mm -hmm. It's detrimental to yourself, you know? So I just want that, you know, because so many people will hear this and they, you know- Well, I'm gonna add to take that. Take it as and it go out like mm -hmm. we've attacked them and instead of seeing the love, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, we love you. It's not, for me, it's never an attack on you. You know what I'm saying? I want to add to that. Give First Corinthians 6 and 9. People, I'm gonna tell you about the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. You say, hey, bro, man should not lay down with mankind. Uh, you want to kill me? You hate? No, yeah. it's not that. Like if I see a brother, I know brothers that steal. Bro, mm -hmm. the Bible says thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Most brothers, they know that's not an attack on them. Mm -hmm. I'm not, that's out of genuine love to, yeah. hey, fix your life. You're going to end up in jail or dead. Okay, so likewise, the LGBT community, the rappers that's in that, that life of rapping, getting us to go the opposite way of God. Mm -hmm. Watch what it says here. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now I want to pause there. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is going to be on earth. Like the Lord's Prayer says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth in earth. So when Christ comes, he's going to set up the kingdom here. You're not living up in the sky. You're going to be on earth. Watch this. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, neither fornicators, neither, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, idolaters, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor effeminate. That's girly boys. You might not be having sex with a man, but you act very feminine. Go ahead. <laughs> nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now that's homosexuals and lesbians. N nor thieves, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor revelers, nor extortioners, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Here it comes, uh, and uh, and such were some of you, and such were some of you. But ye are washed, 
but ye are sanctified. So but what does this prove? They changed their life. Yes. Some of the disciples that came and followed Christ, some of them were effeminate. Some of them were uh, abusers of themselves right. of mankind. Some of them were thieves. Idolaters. Idolaters. They changed their life. That's the message. Never take what I'm saying or anything we read out the Bible, because they'll see Israelites on the street. Ah, watch this. Look what they say. You can't judge me, especially some of the sisters. You can't judge me. Stop, sis. <laughs> She says no man can judge, right? You hear that? You ever hear that? Yeah. All watch this. I'm gonna show you something. Here, all watch First Corinthians two, the last few verses. The book of First. Watch this. The book of First Corinthians, chapter two, and verse uh, thir thir thirteen, fifteen. Be but he that is spiritual judges all things. He that is spiritual judges all things. Meaning what? When we judge, we're just reading. We say, "Hey, God says this. This is what God says." Now they'll say you can't judge, but Monday morning in family court. Guess what the majority of black women are doing? Taking a black man to family court. Say, Mr. Judge, white man, yeah. uh, he old baby, my, he my baby daddy. I, I want you to put him on child support. If he don't pay, he got to go to jail. And that is, ends up happening. So they let the white man judge the black man. And God, the law says we, the spiritual man judges all things. Okay, but they don't want that because nobody wants to change their life. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I wanted to know, um, so within, within the organization, do you, uh, do you allow other organizations to mix within? Do you, um, do you let that happen? We work with- Associate you? Yes, what we, like we have a youth violence mm -hmm. uh, group where we go in various cities, we sit down with the uh, assemblymen or the leaders of the community, or whether it's the church or whatever, and we have them, pick who they want to represent and give ideas to the youth on youth violence, how to correct it. And we sponsor that. And the police also, how could I forget them? The police also, they'll choose uh, the community affairs police officers to come down. So there'd be a, a, a good panel of people to, to give suggestions, advice, ideas on how to curb youth violence. And we're there as well, and give, telling, let the people know what God says. And they make the decisions from there. But we do. We work with other groups, other, uh, other organizations in terms of fixing the community. We also have a, a community cleanup where we go to various cities and we literally clean up the garbage on the street. Because some of our people, uh, if your mind is, is filthy, the way you live is filthy. Your home is filthy. Your community is filthy. Like you're in on, a, on an elevator in the projects. How, just clean the elevator. Stop pissing in an elevator. So we go around and clean up communities. Certain like certain blocks in certain cities, we clean up, and we ask the community, "Hey, come out and help us. Work with us." Some do, some don't, but it's a work in progress. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, cleanliness is next to godliness. Mm -hmm. You know, you should. What um, what's inside your mind does happen to come out? You know, project. That's right. You know, was what was what around you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to get your um, understanding on is um, what does Jesus mean when he says, "If once someone smacked the right side of your face, you were to turn the left cheek and oh. allow them to." Let's read it first, so we get the exact quote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm paraphrasing. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Matthew five. It's around the bottom half. Turn the other cheek somewhere around there. Let's, mm, yes. 39, 39. First on Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whatsoever shall but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, the understanding to that, number one, remember who he's speaking to, the children of Israel. Okay? Roman, here's a precept, Romans 12, 20. Romans chapter 12. The book 12. of Romans chapter 12 and verse 20. It's going to help us get understanding. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, mm -hmm. feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For if, if for in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So when he talks about your enemy, he's not talking about Rome. Because Rome, hey God, is talking about your Israelite brother. Because we had a problem with each other. The problem is, when remember the law said, remember the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The problem with our people, we will love our slave master before we love each other. That's why 
We will shoot each other, but we will never come against this white man that enslaved us. Now, I'm not advocating violence at all, but I'm showing you the, 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 the relation, how we will fight each other first, but we will bend the knee to this white man, okay? So now, enemy. I'm going to deal with this enemy. Matthew, uh, I mean, um, get me uh, Exodus 23, 23. Book, the book of Exodus, chapter 23 and verse 2. Thou shalt, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in the cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Verse 3. Neither shalt thou con continence a, uh, a poor man Exodus in Exodus 23, cause. 23. Exodus 23. You're in 23, yeah, verse 4. Go ahead. If, verse 4. If thou meet thy enemy's ox, his ass goeth astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. So... The enemy he's talking about is the enemy in, when we had and we're in the land of Israel. Let's say I didn't like you, mm -hmm. but I saw your ox or your ass going astray. I said, you know what? I don't like that dude bigger. The law says I gotta go get your ox or ass and bring it to you. And that's what Christ was saying. If if you smack me, turn the other cheek, meaning don't go back evil for you. He's telling us restrain yourself from going against your brother, because sometimes your brother we we may say or do things whether or not we're being evil intentionally. Or out of ignorance. He's saying don't retaliate against your brother. Okay, that's what Christ is saying. But in, I remember growing up, we were taught that that when we when we read that in church, that means no matter what the white man do to you, just let him kick you. Remember the water hoses on our people? Of course. But that's not that was the misappropriation uh, of the scriptures. It don't mean do it don't mean that. It means with each other. Learn because in order to become a strong nation of people, we've got to first have that sincere love one for another. Give me that law of Leviticus 19. Let me show you how this, because we think our neighbor is other nations first. I'm going to show you that. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19, or 17. Thou shalt hate, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So who's our neighbor? Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. The children of your people. The children of your people. That's not the Chinese. That ain't the white man. That ain't the Arabs. We got to start to, those laws were for Israel to keep, for us to keep. And we've not applied these things to each other. If we read it, we apply it to other nations. We'll go, that white man is my neighbor. You ever see good times? Yeah, of course. Remember when little Michael brought black Jesus in the house? Yeah, of course. What does mama say? She didn't want him on the wall. Exactly. Because we don't, we can't love or respect anything that looks like us. Why? Because we've been taught to hate ourselves. You said I was drunk Ned or something. Yeah, right? yeah, Ned the Wino, <laughs> Ned the Wino. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, and so, and this is what, when we sit down with the various religious denominations, we say, listen, we got to teach this to the young men. We got to learn this amongst each other. And like I said, there's a few, one out of two will accept, but the vast majority say, no, no, no. They want to keep things the way they are. And if we keep things the way they are, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Who would have ever thought uh, there'd be a rap video of a woman rapping about how she kills a baby, rips it out of her? I would have never in my life thought anybody would rap about something like that. But that's the new thing, one of the new things going on. Kill that baby. Get that little... T I remember I saw a video where a Ku Klux Klan member said, I want to say thank you to the black community for killing more black people than we ever thought of killing. And if you look at it today, that's what's happening. Starting, I know you were here, black woman, but because yes, black men, we killing each other. But black woman, 19 million abortions from 1973 to now, 19 million black babies. That's murder at an astronomical level. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy, bro. We got we got to learn. Okay. You think that if we had something in place that um like the people wrestle with that, should they not allow abortion, you know? A more abortion is murder. Yeah. It should not be allowed at all. You know, God gives us the root of it in Ezekiel. If I, if, give me a second, if I can just find that real quick, bear with me, I'm about abortion, I'm gonna talk about that. Uh, it might be Ezekiel 23. Ezekiel 23, I'm gonna show you the root of abortion. Where it come from? Start at verse 37. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23 and verse 37. That they have committed adultery. The first sin is adultery being committed. Go ahead. And blood is in their hands. Mm -hmm. and, with the, and with their idols have they committed adultery. The second law broken is idolatry. 
Like in church, when you worship white Jesus, that's idolatry. That's the second law. Go ahead. And have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass from them through the fire to defile them. Killing babies. That's abortion right there. Abortion. Watch this. Moreover, this have they done unto me. They have defiled thy, my sanctuary in the same day, and have profaned my Sabbaths. Go ahead. For when they had slain their children to their idols. When they have slain their children, meaning killed their babies to their idols. Go ahead. Then they came to the, the same day. Then they came the same day. Into my sanctuary to profane it. Mm -hmm. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. Our sisters who are committing adultery, the majority religion of them is Christianity. They, when you see that cross, they'll say, I'm a Christian. But they are killing babies. Why? Because they're not being taught, thou shalt not commit adultery. They're not being taught, thou shalt not kill. They're not being taught that. And it must be emphasized by the men. Men and older women in the community must be teaching that to the youth, to the young. Some of our generation, I don't want to cut them loose. I don't want to ever feel like there's no hope for them. Because I think there's hope for us, all of us. But until the, Lord, until the Lord pulls the breath of life from them, there's hope. There's hope for them. So we got to keep teaching, keep preaching. They might get mad at us. They might see that, oh, you hate me. It's not hatred. It's love, divine love, to save your life, to save your soul. So I beg and I plead, Israel, we got to repent. Black man, black woman, we must repent as a people, as a nation, as a race. Yeah, it's all about repentance. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that since you say that it's a brother thing when we slap the other cheek and turn the other cheek, what is your position on um, the recent fighting between, you know, um, the camps? The, fi the fighting's between the camps. Ugh. I saw it and it broke yes. my heart. You know yes. what I'm saying? I don't, you know. Give me why they betrayed Christ. Let me show you this. I got, uh, since you brought that up, because those of you that know is you're not in Christ, we teach the commandments. Love your neighbor. That's the first thing. When you see beefing and all that, understand this. It's never coming from us. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, he knew that for Matthew 26. Uh, yeah, when they three. they live it, uh, Christ I didn't up think to, you would allow that, but you know, I see, I know the brothers is under you, so I'm like, yes, the brothers, they they know not to do that. They understand their their job, our, my job is to follow the commandments of the Lord. When they delivered Christ to Pilate, the Judas betrayed him. When they delivered Christ to Pilate, and it said he knew that for envy's sake. No, I gotta look. Bear with me. For, let me find it. Okay, y'all, bear with me a second. I just got to show you this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's UPK. Okay, that's who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch this. John 18. John 18, 18. Okay. The book of John, chapter 18 and verse... No, Matthew 27, 18. I like that one. Matthew 27, 18. Watch this. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 18. Mm. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. The root of envy is hatred. When you're a hater, a hater is never doing better than the person they hate. Okay, let's say you're financially successful. Somebody that's, that, that you're, you're not looking down hating anybody because you're doing you. You're taking care of your business, your family. Is you're not in Christ. We're doing God's work. We're doing, taking care of God's business. We're not sowing hatred towards anybody. Okay, but envy, like, there's an expression uh, about fake friends, okay? A fake friend will do much more damage than a real enemy, okay? Your brother, whom you're supposed to love, and we do love, we send up prayers for ISUPK, uh, GMS, all of the camps that's out there. You name them, we pray for them. But, and we're all on the same mission, the kingdom, getting the kingdom, establishing the nation of Israel. But if you see us being able to, the Lord opening up a doorway for me, all of us to enter various countries, sit down. Like we just had a meeting with uh, uh, the Haitian leader in uh, Haiti, barbecue. barbecue. Sat down with him, discussed things. And it's taken as, oh, you sold out. Oh, you, you, you're, you're a homosexual, you're gay. No, bro, that's envy. That's jealousy. And we're not about that. We show love for our people. 
Okay. Now we ain't gonna let you just start shoot a like one of our brothers, we're in the street too. One of our brothers got shot, another one got stabbed. Okay. And that's the, the plight of the black community, which is supposed to be the Israelites, but that is what's going on. And we tell, like I said, we read earlier in Romans 9, they're not all Israel, which are of Israel, meaning they will accept the truth. They say, okay, I'm Israel, but I'm not obeying the law about love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm not obeying that. I will always call you a faggot. I will call you a name. And if I see you, I'm going to stab you. That's what Paul said. They are not all Israel, which are of Israel. And it's a sad, it's a sad shame. How did, who was killing the apostles? Fellow Israelites. Because they hated the teachings of Christ. They hated the teachings of repentance. They hated the teachings of keep the commandments. As it was back then, so it is today. So I hope you understand. And I hope everybody online understands. <laughs> you think you could rec you think you'll be able to reconcile? The only of course. The only thing that can reconcile us yeah. is the word of God. Mm -hmm. If if brothers are not able to accept what this book says, okay, then then we gotta we like if we we see you, we go another way. Okay. And what like it said, like Paul said, he said he followed people that follow Christ to strange cities. Like if we're on this side of the street teaching, you have certain camps. Oh, this is not a, let's go over there and teach right in front of them. It's like, what the hell is this? You see how big the city is? So now we're going to other states. We're going to other countries. Okay. And like I said earlier about the brother uh, barbecue, who they call barbecue. And he's been giving us a lot, our brothers, a lot of insight to what's going on with geopolitical, the geopolitical realm on what's really going on. And he asked us for help. And guess what? We are helping to the best of our ability. Until they, and he knew, he said, listen, they're going to kill me. He said, I'm going to tell y'all this. He told the brother, it was Deacon Malachi, Deacon Isaac, Deacon Laba. He said, what y'all are teaching, that we're the Israelites, we must keep the commandments. And the reason we suffer as a people is for breaking the commandments. He said, they're going to kill y'all too. And we're, we understand that. We understand that. And they're using other, quote unquote, black brothers to do it, okay? And we understand that. Just like uh, with Fred Hampton, you saw Judas and the Black Messiah, the of movie? Of course. You always got that spy, that inside man, or the, might be somebody on the outside, that's used to try to shut you down. Why? Because you're making too much noise to unify the people. And that's our, that's our job, to unite the 12 tribes of Israel. And we have many, many enemies. We understand that. Yeah, I think um, we have to be very mindful of um, what we do with each other, especially with the children watching. Mm -hmm. When I um, when I saw it, I looked and I said, I don't, I don't, I watched you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you, you know. I don't operate yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I said. I don't think we had one brother, uh, Captain Ben Zion. Shout out to you. He got an altercation with a UPK member about something. It was about a corner. I said, go out there next week and apologize. Guess what? Now, this is a, this is a alpha male. He's, and I'm thinking to myself, he ain't going to do it. He's not going to do it. <laughs> he went out there. He apologized to the brother. He said, listen, I apologize. But the brother would not receive it. You effing this, you're that. He said, bro, it was my bad. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We got to learn to learn to forgive one another. Absolutely. Okay? And this is what, we had a, a, a sit down with a church member. What church, where was the church, Michigan? The ones that took the AK-47s out on us? It was what? in Virginia. It was in Virginia. Virginia, Virginia. They took AK-47s. They had AKs. We got the video. And then two weeks later, it was Captain Yohanathan sat down with the minister and said, listen, this meeting, in order for it to go smooth, one of the first things we got to do is learn to respect one another and learn to apologize. When we wrong, Let's apologize. Mm -hmm. The minister said, I didn't do nothing wrong. The brother said, y'all took weapons out on us and we just wanted to talk to you. He said, we didn't do nothing wrong. And then he got up and walked out. He said, I ain't got nothing more to say to you niggas. And left. But that, so it's not just the Israelite community. Yeah. I'm letting you know it's throughout all amongst <laughs> no, no, our no, people. No, no, absolutely. You know? it's, it's definitely something yes. that we do as brothers. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? There's no thing on there. As brothers, we... As brothers, we fight each other. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's and just a bad look. We're trying to change. This is why Israel United in Christ, and I give all praises to the, to the Most High and the Son Christ. We are the largest Israelite movement ever. 
and we are global. And when I say global, meaning we're setting up institutions in Ghana. I don't know if you saw the school we set up in Ghana. No. Built from the ground Definitely up, so. okay? We're, we sit down with vice, vice president in, what was that, Uganda? Yes. Sat down with- uh, Peter Davis. Yes, sat down uh, with mayors. We try, we, people are hearing about us, and that's- No, of course. Where, the Bahamas, right. Mm -hmm. It was the prime minister in the Bahamas, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And they see what we're about, and we want all the Israelite camps to see what we're about. We're not saying we're better than, we're saying we're your brothers. Work with us. But envy will cause you not to work with your brother. You know, how, like I, like I said, I was the, the junior of many of the Israelite leaders you see today. I'm junior. But the Lord saw fit in my heart. I'm sincere. He said, I'm going to give this brother a blessing in this truth. So we have grown exponentially. And the older, my senior men go, how in the hell is he able to do all this work when I came in way before him? I think I know more than him. But I'm sincere, and the Lord knows, he knows I'm not about, I don't, I'm not about BS. I'm about God's work gathering our people together. So that spirit of jealousy now comes in. I'm your older brother. How are you going to excel me? How are you going to excel? I remember Joseph and his brothers, uh, when yes. they sold Joseph into Egypt. Yes. He's our little brother. And he's seen all this wisdom. He's given wisdom of dreams and all this. Let's get rid of him. Put him in, throw him in the, in the thing and sell him to the Ishmaelites. That's how it is today. Same with Christ. They were envious of Christ. Yeah, of course they were. Same thing. Pick up stones to stone them because mm -hmm. of their misunderstanding of what he was saying. Yes, sir. Uh, um, I'm glad you touched on the um, icon thing because that is really big right now, him letting out the black icons. Do you think that was to slap America in his face? That was to, co to cause a civil war in America. It's easier to, def to fight an enemy from the outside if you can cause confusion on the inside. So the civil war that happened with January 6th is nothing. Give me that second under 1670 of insurrection. They said, Pu Pu this is what Putin's mentality is. If I can cause psychological disruption, because this is a Christian country, allegedly, and say Jesus is black and show proof, I can disrupt that whole thing. Then it's easy to attack them. Read this. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 70. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So that's a prophecy. There's going to be a great insurrection against the Israelites. The FBI have been watching us, monitoring us. The SPLC, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, ADL, Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, uh, APOC, American, Israeli, some I forgot what it stands for, KUFI, Christians United for Israel. If Jesus is black, then that means those black people are his people. Putin said, Jesus is black. Pow, what you going to do with that? Which means the people in Israel that y'all supporting, those ain't the people of God. The prophecy says there's going to be an insurrection against our people. And that's what's going to happen. As we grow in this truth, they see us making moves, going country to country. They say, yo, these ain't no ordinary dudes just standing on the corner talking about the white man and the devil. They're more than that. This is the dangerous group, them purple and gold dudes traveling here and there. They're going to come against us. I understand that. The men with me, we all understand. Our wives understand that. We tell the women, get ready. It's going to come. Or oh, another one. If you ever look up the Canary Mission, if you say anything against so-called Israel, and it's recorded, they put you on a list, okay? Yes. A list to get you terminated from a job, to get you kicked out of a college, an institution. It's called Canary Mission. They work with the ADL, uh, the KUFI. They work all they, they're all united. They all work together against our people. You see a lot of people on that list. I'm on that list. That's this one of the most dangerous men in America. Well, of course. <laughs> well, of course. I um, watched you on the platform with um, a so-called Jewish brother. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked you how many people, how many soldiers you had. And shot away from her, but mm -hmm. then you said, all right, what's the roundabout number? And he said, four or 5,000. Well, that was back then. Yeah, that was back then. That was back <laughs> then. I said, oh, man. You know what I'm saying? I could mean, oh, it's a lot more than that now. Like, you saw the Barclays Center. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm like, here it is. I'm, I think, you know, my Lord thinks strong with a hundred and something. Mm -hmm. I said, 
thousands, I commend you, brother. That's all well, praise that, to the most that, high. That's the well, thing. Because when they take me out, guess what? There's going to be 144 the other men. They know yeah. what I know. Yeah. Do what I do. Yeah. So I ain't nobody. I'm just a worm. No, all, okay? we all are tools. Yeah, you all tools. We all tools. Because remember what J. Edgar Hoover said. He said the most... He said the most dangerous thing to the United States of America is Negro unity. That's why they, they got rid of the Black Panthers. They got rid of SNCC. They got rid of all those Black, revolution, all those black revolutionary groups that was on the rise, COINTELPRO. So likewise, now their eyes on us. And they're trying to say we had something to do with a Jersey shooting years ago, which we had nothing to do with that. FBI came by my house. Can we come in? I said, come on in. Sit down. We understand that you have something to do. I said, really? Is you not in Christ? I said, let me see the pictures, please. Because they knew I was used to work for the police department. Mm -hmm. I was, I, and I got cameras, too. I said, I just want y'all to know you're being recorded in case you try something. Yeah. So they showed me the photos. I said, listen, those are Muslims that did that jersey shoot. Those are not Israelites. <laughs> yeah. Israelites don't even dress like that. So he goes, we know. But we're under pressure to interview the various Israelite groups. So I understood they're trying to paint a narrative that we're violent, we're filled with hate, we want to destroy everybody. And it's not true. We're just trying to raise up the 12 tribes. And when Christ comes, he going to do what he going to do. We're going to leave it like that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> going back to the 12 tribes thing, it was something that um, I wanted to ask you about because I have questioned this, you know. Um, and like I said, I don't know anything, but I have questions. Mm -hmm. So I read the scripture, and he says that, our punishment was that he was going to split us up on the earth. Yes. So then I think, I said, all right, so we got split up on every corner of the earth, and what happened? We went into slavery. Correct. And what did the slave master do? He raped our women, mm -hmm. and he had all these kids. And then I think about, okay, I got the Italians. The Italians is mixed with the Israelites. Yep. Then I think of the Jews in Russia. And I'm like, all right, Putin is letting out now the icon showing the Israelites was there. Right. I think about every so-called group of white people, and you know what I realized? The Israelites was there. Mm -hmm. So then I say to myself, Israelites' blood is in every, every group of people. So if the Israelite blood is in every nation of people, wouldn't we all on this earth be Israelites? No. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm just trying to yeah, Get you Ezekiel, know, break it down. I'm going to show you Revelation, uh, I mean, Ezekiel 36, 5. Uh, when you learn about nations, so I'm going to go back to the Italian thing. Yes. Um, read this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, 36 and verse 5. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. So the, the people that took the land of Israel today is Idumia. That's a Greek word for Edom. Go to chapter before 35 and 5. Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. Because that talking about Edom, because you have had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel, they've killed us by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So when our iniquity had an end is when we were emancipated. But what did they do? They set up things like Jim Crow laws, Ku Klux Klan, vagrancy laws, and they, they killed us continuously. Not just here in America, mm -hmm. but they did it to us in Italy, did it to us in Rome. So now some white people do have our blood in them. However, this white Christ said, don't teach any man to break the commandments. When white people come around us, we say, listen, keep the commandments. They go, what can we do? We say, Christ said, if you love me, keep the commandments. Do that. Because guess what? If our blood is in them mm -hmm. and they're keeping the commandments, there's nothing we could do to stop them from being delivered. Okay, you understand that? Regardless of what they look like. Yes. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. if they're not our people, that, that natural hatred they have, like it said there, they're going to hate our guts. They're going to want to destroy us. And it's going to come out because the ones that say, oh, I believe in Israel. Like I remember I was in Europe teaching one day and a white woman said, oh, I believe that, that, we're, that you're Israel. I do believe that. I believe Jesus is black. Then she went to the police 
to get us arrested. <laughs> and, I, and I just, we didn't no, get arrested though. Funny, I know. Yeah. I let her know. I said, listen, judgment's going to come for you. So I'm letting you know, don't be fooled by a lot of them. Mm-hmm. The history, even if they got a blood in, our blood in them. Remember, uh, oh, First Maccabees 1, watch this. I'm going to show about our own people. Yeah. First Maccabees 1, 111. Six. Uh, 111 about they hated their own people. Yes. First Maccabees First chapter Maccabees, 1. About Antiochus. First Maccabees chapter 1. And hated verse, their own people. 15. Verse 15. Verse 15. First Maccabees 1 verse 15. And made themselves uncircumcised. And f- uh, Nope. It's right, it says they hated their own, verse 11. Verse 11. In those days went out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we had departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So now notice that wicked men of Israel. Now look at 1121, chapter 11, verse 21. Thank you. Verse Maccabees 11, verse 21. Yeah. Watch this, come on. First Maccabees chapter 11, verse 21, and it reads, Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. What are we doing? Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. Amongst us, even us melanated people, there are some of us who hate our own people. Absolutely. There's some of our like you talked about the Sicilians, a lot of them hate us, although our Absolutely. blood is in them. Yeah. They're not going to be saved. Unless they keep the commandments in Christ. They got to support this truth. They got to come and support this truth. They ain't got to sit with us. Support behind the scenes. Keep the commandments. And guess what? There's nothing we can say that will keep them from being delivered. They'll be delivered. You understand? I understand All that. praise. I agree with that. <laughs> um, because like you just said, you have those out there that's going to say, what's going to happen to me? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know, where do I fit in this? And, you know, that was just something that me studying scripture all the years I have, I sat back and I said, our blood must be mixed in everyone. Because even when you spoke about Yaku earlier, and I even studied that, they, so they said that Yaku, not that I was assigned to. Okay, thank you. I was got nervous that, for a second. No, <laughs> uh, we already know who made mm-hmm. everything, right. you know what I'm saying? But according to that, history if you was to even follow that Yaku made the white man if that was the case who was Yaku? Mm-hmm. Yaku was the Israelite mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so it's like there's no getting around that mm-hmm. Israelite is there right. you know so they you know somehow will still be related oh I got another good in, example in some sense on Netflix there's a movie, a documentary called Little, uh, is it Little White Lies? Little White Lies. It's about a Jewish community. Mm-hmm. One of them has a daughter. And the daughter has thick hair, mm-hmm. curly. Her lips are thicker. Her nose is wider. And her, all her family would always say, she looks a little different. When you keep watching the documentary, the mom had had an affair with a black guy in Brooklyn, New York. Mm-hmm. But and so the daughter thought she was Jewish, one of them, you know, mm-hmm. one of them. But she was really one of our people. She didn't know until she got became around twenty twenty five. So, Ma, why did you ever tell me that this was my father? They, they, the husband and wife got a divorce as a result. And a mom tells the daughter, "Your dad." Was, she said, "Remember the funeral we went to last year?" She said, "Oh yeah, that was your friend. Uh, I forgot his name. I'll say Harry just for the sake." Mm-hmm. She said, "That was your father." So. I said that to say this, so our blood is in various nations, yeah. okay? Um, Acts 5, watch this. Acts 5, 29 and 30. I need everybody online to understand this. The book of Acts chapter 29, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Mm-hmm. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hung on the tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand, to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Repentance to who? Israel and forgiveness of sins. Repentance to who? Israel and forgiveness of sins. If our people are not coming as Israel, repentance is not open to them. We cannot say, oh, I repent as a Catholic. I repent. At, 
as a Baptist, that's not in here. Christ and repentance is open to Israel. Now, I said that, I wanted, I'm going back to Israel, the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. Revelation 3, 9. You know that one. Yes. But Those people over there that we remember we just read in Ezekiel 36, 5, it said, Idumia took the land. Mm -hmm. That's who they really are. Watch what Christ said to them. About. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. They are lying. When they say that they're the Jews, Christ said they're the synagogue of Satan. They're lying. Go ahead. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So when Christ returns, he's going to make these people bow at our feet. You know, some people get offended at that. God is a God of justice and judgment. Our people have never seen justice in America. In fact, worldwide, we've never seen justice. Justice is, if I steal from you, I must return what I stole, okay? That's, we've never seen that because things were stay, stolen from us as a people, as a nation. It's never been returned. Christ said, don't worry. When I come back, I'm going to make them bow at your feet. That offends some people. What? Because they don't even know what's in the Bible. They say, listen, that's what Jesus said. Do you accept that? Some people say, brothers, I see a lot go, yes! But then I see some sisters go, I don't accept that. How are you going to get saved and you're rejecting the words of God. Absolutely. If it's in there, accept it. Believe it. And wait for it to come to pass, because it will come to pass. <laughs> what is salvation? Salvation is, give me Revelation 2.25. Oh, oh, no, Luke 1. I like Luke 1, 77. What is salvation? That's a good question. Here is the answer. The book of Luke, chapter 1, and verse 77. No, not 77. Luke 1. Let's 68? start it. Yes. 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Lord God of who? Of Israel. Mm -hmm. For he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Christ is the horn of salvation. Go ahead. So as, the question is, what is salvation? Mm -hmm. Watch this. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So you ask me, what is salvation? being saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That's salvation. That's what Christ is coming to do. When we hear people say, oh, I'm saved. No, you're not. Not yet. We are still captive here in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Okay? Until Christ comes and saves us, and then he asks them, who's the enemies and the, who's the one that hates us? They go, the, 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 the clever, crafty answer, because people are afraid to say what it is, they say the devil. But notice, read the word again. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies. Enemies. Plural. Not the devil. Enemies. So who's, now watch, I'm going to show the enemies. Deuteronomy, and now you know, but I need our people. On. Who's the enemies? Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord shall bring you into slavery again. With ships. Ships. Slave ships. By the way whereof thy spake unto thee, that thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. There you shall be sold to your enemies. For bondmen. Slave men. And bondwomen. Slave women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall save us from the condition God put us in. So now, who are the enemies that sold us? The white man, the Arab man, the Chinese man, the East Indian man, all nations had a hand in it. So now Christ is coming to save us from these very same enemies that the Bible speaks of. Remember, the Old Testament and New Testament is one book. Yes. People like to separate it. No, it goes together. Yeah. Okay? So the enemies is talking about there is the same enemies Christ said, I'm going to save you from the enemies. So our people, some of our religious people go, I don't know who the enemies are. You would never heard about slavery? Oh, you heard about it, but you're going to turn a blind eye to the truth that you know there is. Yeah, that's, um, I love that. Um, death. You say death is. Death, you got the physical death. Okay, like, uh, get me that, Sirach 40, Ecclesiastes. Let me show you that. Watch this. Death. We're going to talk about death for a moment in time. Ecclesiastes, cuss. It's either 40 or 41. Let me look. It says it's over all flesh. I want that one. Uh, bear with me. I just got to find it for a second. Yeah. No, it, mm. it says, uh, verse 3, 40, 41 and 3. 
Yes. Yeah, let me hear it. Sirach chapter 41 and verse 3. Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. All flesh is appointed to death. And the death this is talking about is the death of this body. But there's another death. Give me that in Matthew uh, 10. The what Christ death. said. The second death. Which I now, was coming next. Exactly. <laughs> Matthew 10, around uh, mm. fear not him that can feel the body in the sea. Right here. Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. Or is it over here? Uh, yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. What about kill a body? 28. Okay. Matthew 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body. Fear not them that kill the body. But are not I but are not able to kill the soul. They can't kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now the question is, what is that hell that Christ is talking about? That comes back. Go go back to Revelation 14. Watch this. And verse 9. And read down. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, If any man worship this white man and his image, And receive his mark, You receive his philosophies, In his forehead, mm -hmm. Or in his hand, You support it, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Watch this. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstones in the presence of the holy angels. And in the presence of the Lamb. You see that? So that's that second death. That's the, that we don't want. Nobody, we, none of us want that. That's why, remember Romans 6? It says, the, for the wages of sin yeah, is sure death. death. Read that, Romans 6, 23. But the gift of God, read that. The book of Romans. Uh, chapter 6, verse 23. Chapter 6 and verse 23. Yeah. Let me get to it real quick. Let me. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So if eternal life, if, read again. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. Is eternal life. That's salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that's the ultimate. So now that death is not talking about death for the body, because we're all appointed to die. So that for the wages of sin is death is talking about that second death. That lake of fire death that comes when Christ returns, okay? That's what we all want to avoid, okay? I don't know about you. I hope I can speak for you and say we don't want to go in that thing, okay? So that's for our brothers and sisters online. We're supposed to have that, 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 that fear of the most high, that I respect. would like to avoid both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Well, you want eternal life, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah of course. Yes. I know you want to avoid the death of this body, too, yeah, well, okay? This from... I would like to believe from my understanding, mm. once I give my life and my life was in Christ, I have already defeated death. That, yes, you know? the, the death you've defeated yeah. is that eternal death, yeah. that damnation that Christ and, is talking and, about. And, and, and scripture says that death no longer has this thing. Exactly. Remember what Christ said in John 12? Give me that, John 12, 29. Watch that. I need y'all to watch this. Now, some of y'all going to believe, some of y'all not going to believe. I can't help everybody. Is it John 12, 29? Let's read. The 29 says, uh, the people, therefore, that stood tormented under. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Way said, uh, you shall never die. Believe it's out there. Is it John 5? Bear with me. Zeph, you know what I'm talking about? What did he say? Uh, if, do you believe that about never dying? That's the... mm. Okay. Let me find it. Let me find yeah. it. I believe it's out there. 26. 11.26, thank you. John 11, verse 26. John chapter 11, verse, you said 11, 26? Yes, sir. It started at 25. Right. Verse 25. That's it. It reads, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, ye shall live. Yet shall he. Let me read it. Let me read it. Sorry. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So now remember that to our Lazarus. And he, had, he resurrected Lazarus from the dead. So that's what Christ is telling us. He said, don't, don't fear. We've been taught to fear the death of this body. Absolutely. But when, guess what? You, well, let me show you something. When we die, watch Revelation 6, I want verse, I think it's 9. Yes. Under the altar. 
When we die yes. in the body, watch what happens. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, and verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. That were killed for the word of God. And for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does that not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So they're not dead. When this body goes, we're before the Lord. Remember Paul said to be absent in the body is to be present with, with the, the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's something we got to understand and believe. And that's for the Israelites. That's not for people that rebel against the commandments. When they die, they, they just at rest until the time of uh, resurrection comes. Yeah. Watch this. Uh, uh, Daniel 12 and 2. Daniel 12 and 2. Let me show you. I got to show you. I got to show you. Okay. Daniel the book 12 of Daniel, two. chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Some to everlasting shame and contempt. Watch, here's what Christ said, John 5, 29. Talking about death, watch this. The Same book of thing. John, chapter 5, verse 29. Verse 29. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Start at 28. Verse 28. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Everybody that's in the grave shall hear Christ's voice. Watch this. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Done good means believed in him and kept the commandments. To everlasting life. Go ahead. And they that have done evil. Done evil. You broke the commandments. You rejected the truth that you're Israel. Unto, unto the resurrection of damnation. See that? The resurrection of damnation. That's the second death. That's what we don't want, brothers and sisters. You don't want that. So that's why it behooves everyone. Listen to this truth, okay? Consider it. Study the scriptures. Look at it. Examine it. We're not lying to you. We're not lying. Absolutely. That's what I meant when I said I would want to escape both of them. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? In order to escape both of them, I know I have to live my life right. I know my life has to be within Christ. And that's the same thing I you know, try to tell the people, try to teach my sons. And that's what it's all about. I think at the end of the day, um, that's the message I try to get to you guys, that um, we're in a systematic setup that is a little bit beyond us. But thank God that we have Jesus who two cats came here, that we, if we are within him, we can escape this death. You know, we can escape the sins of Adam. And... Um, that's what it's about. You know, we have to, um, I know a lot of people don't believe in Satan. They don't believe in all of this Bible stuff we're talking. But then what would this all be about? You have to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. and it, what would this all be about? Exactly. You know, we know that we're dealing with a God of order because just look. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not something, not a mystery. Right. You know what I'm saying? People ask me, how do you know the Bible is true? Remember what we read in Deuteronomy 20, if we break the commandments, all these curses shall come upon you. And it talks about your sons and daughters shall be given to another people. It yes. talked about us going on slave ships. So if that happened, three, he prophesied that 3,000 years ago, and it happened to us. So you mean to tell me the rest of everything else is a lie? No, I believe everything else that this Bible says, because that surely came to pass. So I know the Bible's true. Okay? Absolutely. Slavery happened, you better believe salvation's coming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, if someone wanted um, to join the movement, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? How would they go about joining the movement? The first thing is repentance. Okay? When you get First Kings for me, yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to give my uh, visit our website, www.israelunite.org. But, Let's say you want to give it some time, which you have time mm -hmm. while you're still breathing right now. But this is what is prophesied for us to do. Read that verse 40... 46. 46. Yeah, 46. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and, that, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy. And deliver them to the enemy, which we've been delivered to the enemy of this white man. So that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy. We're in the land of the enemy. Far or near, mm -hmm. yet if they shall bethink themselves. See that part right there? Meaning, remember who you are. Remember that you're the Israelites. Watch this. 
in the land, whether they were carried captives and repent. And what? And repent. Go ahead. And make supplication unto thee. Supplication means you bow on your knees and beg before the Lord, cry before the Lord, and say what? In the land of them, and them that carried them captive, saying. Saying what? We have sinned. We, we have sinned. And have per done perversely. We have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. We have committed wickedness. That's what God wants to hear. That's the beginning. Before you ever come see me or the brothers, you at home right now, repent. Repent of your sins, confess your faults. That's the beginning, repentance as an Israelite. Then you come see us and we'll lead you further on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Then make us our own enemy. What do you mean? Oh yeah, the sins that we've committed. Yes, because yes, we were warned, correct. You're absolutely right. We, the, the first, before the white man, we are our own worst yeah, enemy. Of course. Because Moses warned us, if you break the commandments, this is what will happen to you. And he prophesied these other nations are going to rise up and make, make you slaves. And that's what happened to us. Yeah. So yes, the brother's correct. We are first enemy, first and foremost. Yeah, that's what, we, that's what we've said on this platform before mm -hmm. that I was attacked about. Um, any, uh, anything you want to say to the people before we wrap it up? Yes, brothers, sisters, I adjure you, please, repent of your sins. Take this very seriously, okay? We love our brothers. We must apply God's laws, commandments to our brothers, our sisters. We have no hatred for anybody. We have no envy for any of our people. The goal, the mission is to unite our people worldwide back into that one mighty nation that the Bible has always prophesied about. Okay? That's all I got. And this was amazing, brother. I all believe, praises, you all know, praises. Amazing. Yes, sir. And that's a wrap. <laughs>